town council meeting. And I would just like to say that I'm sorry that we're late, but we was in a workshop session and it took a little longer than we anticipated, but we've done pretty well. First off, we'll have the roll call from the town clerk. William Jordan? Yep. Jane Amaral? Here. Phyllis Cogsall? Here. Wayne Creelman? Here. Janet Greenlaw? Here. Frank Latore? Here. Nancy Masterton? The next item <clears throat> would be citizens' discussions of items not on the agenda. Anybody here got anything they'd like to discuss that isn't on the agenda? Okay, if not, <coughs> reports and correspondence. You remember the council got anything they'd like to report? Yes, Councilor Cargishaw. <coughs> um, last year, uh, former Chairman <coughs> Frank Latore appointed me to sort of follow the um, development and, uh, of the Million Dollar Bridge. And I attended a meeting along with two other counselors last Wednesday night in South Portland. And it was a very upbeat, informative <coughs> meeting where with um, DEP and Army Corps of Engineering approval, they hoped to put out the first bids for construction <coughs> to begin in the fall of 1990 for the first phase, which is um, reconstructing some of the roads and the traffic patterns in South Portland. And <coughs> then um, they hoped to have the opening of the bridge perhaps in late 1994 and ultimately the existing bridge and the final completion done, the existing bridge will be removed and the final completion of the parkland on the Portland side done by 1995. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one thing I'd like to report that our <coughs> Council Creelman had the great honors of being elected to District 2's Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, and I think many of you have read a lot about the Cumberland County Budget lately, and uh, I think uh, come next year he'll find it very informative to be part of that committee. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on One Smirk Avenue Unsafe Structure. And uh, therefore, I'll open up to the public. Has anybody got a comment that they'd like to make as far as one spur can the unsafe structure? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, th this would actually be the first of, of two public hearings. There'll be an additional public hearing as well on February 12th, uh, uh, if, if that's the date the council agrees to. Uh, when the one of the provisions within the the unsafe structure uh, statute is that notice has to be given uh, to uh, anyone who has an interest in the property, uh, or if you can't find everyone who has an interest, then it has to be advertised for three successive weeks instead of the usual one week period. Our attorneys looked into who had an interest in the property and discovered uh, that there were probably a dozen or more parties with, with various interests in it as, as a result of. Uh, a corporate document that was prepared uh, in relation to the land and as well as various liens at, at one point or another that have been on the property uh, and as, as well as a, a recent decision involving someone who was about to purchase the property and an arrangement that fell through and apparently a, a judge has now ordered that the property be sold to a new party. But because of all those complications anyway the a second notice has to be given. and. Uh, this was formally scheduled for tonight, and it was suggested that perhaps go, go on with tonight's hearing uh, for informational purposes, but with a, a formal public hearing uh, at a later meeting. Anybody got anything they'd like to add to it? I don't know. Anybody, anybody out there hearing? like to speak? Mm I guess I came here tonight hoping to hear you say what you was going to do. And, uh, what are you planning to do down there, anyhow? State your name first, please, and your address. Uh, I think you know me well enough. <laughs> well, Herb Dennison, 63 Sperling Avenue. I would just comment that <coughs> the place has been a nuisance since day one, as most of you have said any involvement with the town knows. And the manager was just talking about people that may be interested in it. 
and I, with all your planning board stuff, and I don't see how it can be a buildable <coughs> lot anyhow when the water runs over and runs in one end of the cell and out the other and did before. It should never have been built there to start with. <coughs> and, and what are we planning to do to it anyhow? You Who, want to yeah, the, the recommendation of the code enforcement officer and the fire chief uh, is essentially that the, the, the foundation walls or the, the, the concrete walls that are on the side uh, be brought down to ground level. Is it going to be left there or hauled off? It, uh, it conceivably be hauled off. Uh, no reason to leave it there. I, I it'd would be, hope. It would be a problem if it was there. It's been a big nuisance, as you know, in the, in the neighborhood. There's been three fires and uh, some good explosions, and I think it's long overdue, and I know what kind of a situation you're dealing with. Uh, you do well if you can find everybody that's got an interest in it uh, with liens and deeds. I, I realize that, but uh, I think the town's got to do something for the sake of the town. Uh, really a nice looking approach coming into town. Thank you. It'll be cleaned up <coughs> when it's done. I don't know just how long it'll take to be completed through the uh, process, but by the end of it, I think you'll find it cleaned up, presentable. Anybody else? <coughs> Therefore, I'll close the public hearing and move on to item 110, to consider scheduling a formal public hearing on the consideration of one spec animal to be an unsafe structure and take unnecessary action. Don't you wish? Council Greenlaw. I happened to drive down by that structure on Saturday, and I was appalled by the condition. I hadn't been by there since the most recent fire, I guess, and it's it's a disgrace, and it should not be allowed to continue any further than we legally need to have it continue. And with that, I would like to move that we set the public hearing for this item on February 12, 1990, at <coughs> 7 o'clock in the council chambers. Second. S did you say 7 or 7.30? 7 7.30. <coughs> Been moved and seconded. Everybody understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Those opposed? It's about six to nothing. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on roadways drainage projects. And I believe all members of the council received some info in the packet about roadway drainage and bikeways and what have you. And uh, I think I'll let the manager kick it off and I believe he has his public works director here to answer all the technical questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I would like to point out that at the request of the council notices of this public hearing uh, were sent to all of those in the, in the affected areas uh, with, the exception, with the exception of the town center study. And as I go through each of the, the various recommendations, I'll indicate to you where the notices were sent. Uh, there are essentially four suggested projects. The first one is a traffic study of Route uh, 77 in the town center. And this has been suggested for some time by the planning board as well as uh, by the Main Street 90 uh, committee. Uh, the specific areas that to be studied would include the Route 77 intersections with Shore Road, Scott Dyer Road, Jordan Way, both shopping center en entrances, and the high school uh, driveway. The hope is that uh, the professional engineers that, that would do this uh, would provide some specific recommendations. Uh, the work would be done uh, this spring. We re recently received a letter from CAC, uh, actually on Friday, the Fulton Area Comprehensive Transit Study.
first project is a system of shoulder improvements uh, on Shore Road uh, from approximately Fort Williams uh, up to the town center. Uh, the specific recommendation that, that I made to the council is that uh, uh, to be provided two to four feet of paid, paved shoulders on each side of the road. Uh, the lesser amount would be in areas where stone walls and significant trees uh, would hinder the development of the project. And this would be so that the, the program of improvements would not necessitate the removal of either uh, trees uh, of stone walls, of, of any significant trees. It might be a little scrub type brush trees that, that might be removed. The intent of the project would be to enhance sight distance and safety without negatively affecting <coughs> the character of the road. It's contemplated that it would start on the, the Fort Williams end of the project. Uh, and it, it's also uh, estimated at this point that the total cost would be $150,000. Uh, my recommendation is that you approve this allocation, uh, but provided that nothing happened until a second allocation is given, uh, which would therefore, uh, if it was approved, delay the work uh, until early in the 1991 construction season. In addition, uh, although the work's already been, I should mention that uh, we also u utilize the source of these funds for our miscellaneous overlay uh, program and $35,000 uh, had already been set aside from this fund within the budget process uh, last uh, May and June for, the, that, for this purpose. So those are my suggestions, uh, recommendations for projects to be funded with the fiscal year 1990 allocation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. So with that review and a quick review, <clears throat> We will open it up to a public hearing. And does anybody out there wish to make a comment one way or the other as far as what we have outlined here? Yes, sir. Um, I'm Gary Beckwith. I live on Oakwood Road. And uh, I uh, do a lot of bicycling around the Cape and commuting to work in, in the city of Portland. And I would like to speak in favor of particularly the Salyer Street uh, improvement and the Shore Road improvement. I think they're both practical. I don't uh, think that uh, they would uh, diminish anybody's property value too much uh, that abuts is on these roads, particularly Shore Road. Now, it's a, it's a beautiful road, and it can be enjoyed uh, very handsomely by walking, by jogging, and by bicycling. And I think, as uh, <coughs> Mr. McGovern pointed out, <coughs> that adding two to four feet to a shoulder that is already there would enhance the safety uh, factor a great deal and uh, not, uh, as I say, diminish property values in, in the doing so. And it, $150,000 is a lot of money, but uh, nevertheless, spread out as it is, um, I think it, we can afford it. I would like to see the town afford it. Uh, <coughs> one of the arguments I would like to to use it. cycling is, I do it because I enjoy it. And I think a lot of other people are doing it because they find it enjoyable <coughs> and good exercise as well. Um, when I was in junior high school in the eighth grade up in Mrs. Murray's room, I used to go over to a little old dirt track that the town had provided over here and run on the track and eventually I moved from the Cape but uh, kept running. But our town has tennis courts, beautiful parks, beaches, uh, a nice track, playing field. We provide a swimming pool. We as a community provide for all kinds of recreational activities and we can see the rewards in these activities. And I think by saying that we're paying this much money for a, a bikeway, we are only supporting another of the physical activities uh, that our townspeople enjoy. And so I would like to endorse and 
May I take just another few minutes? At the hearing of the million dollar bridge replacement, um, I was both elated and uh, um, dismayed. The, the bridge itself has these beautiful bike shoulders eight foot wide on both sides, except both Portland and South Portland when the traffic, when the cyclist goes on to the bridge at either end, they are going to be right back out into just two lanes of traffic going in each direction. No provision has been made for a wider shoulder or anything, and I find that disappointing. Um, I'm pleased that live in a community that has done so much for this, the activity. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, just a minute, sir. Councilor yes. Greenlaw. Gary, I have a question for you on the width that we're discussing, um, especially in the Shore Road proposed improvements. How adequate is a two-foot shoulder improvement for a bicyclist? Uh, when you can add it to the rest of the road, it, it is adequate uh, under most circumstances. Two feet is not very wide, but when you add it to what the center line of the road is and the road in general, it is that added degree of safety. Three feet and four feet would be better, uh, but two feet is adequate, uh, especially it is not a high-speed road um, under most circumstances. It's, it's quite adequate, I would think. Uh, realizing when the uh, initial concept was for a six foot wide on both sides and all of the physical uh, disruption <coughs> that it would cause, uh, I, I think it's adequate compared to cycling the million dollar bridge now <laughs> with <laughs> nothing. Uh, and, and, and the speed that is, is the, the normal traffic goes over the road and so forth. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Comment? Anybody else from the public? I'm Mallory Garrison. I live at 1111 Shore Road. I think Shore Road is beautiful also. I kind of like it the way it is. Um, I walk it almost every day. Um, I'm concerned about the speed. I think if we broaden it, it's going to make it more attractive to go faster. We go awfully fast on the road as it is. And um, the other thing I'm concerned about is that particularly where I live, it's right where the water comes up to the road. And it's a nice place to stop and take pictures and pick flowers and walk on the rocks and do those kinds of things, which is fine, um, except if it gets to be a whole string of cars. If there's going to be more space, there's going to be more cars parking. Um, those are my two main concerns. I think that, that um, you can walk Shore Road. I, I don't bike it, so I think it would be hard to bike it. But you can walk it. If, I think if we control the speed, it would be perfectly safe to do both things. Thank okay, thank you. Anybody got a question, comment? Anybody else from the public? Therefore, I'll close the public hearing and move on to the item on the agenda. Item 111, to consider a public hearing comments <coughs> on the proposed allocation of roadways and draining and drainage improvements, funds, and take any necessary action. Mr. Anybody? Chairman, just to, just to point to refresh my memory again, <clears throat> right now we're just <coughs> voting on the fiscal year 1990 acceptance. Is that right, Michael? That's what's proposed, yes. And how is it again that we vote in January when we're already halfway through the fiscal year 90? You've already, the funds have already been appropriated for roadway and drainage projects. Uh, the question is just how, how what specific <coughs> Uh, projects of those allocated to. But why wouldn't we have this list say in uh, July, on July 1st when we're just beginning the fiscal year? Uh, the primary reason you didn't is because a lot of this depended on how much uh, was left remaining after the Broad Cove drainage project and the Sawyer Road projects were done. And it was held off specifically allocating those funds until those were known as well as to uh, uh, hopefully develop a, gr a greater consensus on the, the Shore Road uh, 
shoulder improvement issue. The council deferred it back at the time uh, of the budget. Then to get to that, and I think we've all had some phone calls and, and had some concern expressed regarding that one particular point here. Um, is the two to four feet, which is going to go from Fort Williams to the intersection of 77, is that the entire length on both sides? It will be either two to, two to four feet. How? I mean, there is there aren't any gaps where it isn't necessary, so it's not happening. It's it's the entire length. Is that? That's the plan. Uh, one thing, you know, this would just start a process. We would still need to develop final plans for it. Uh, you know, perhaps there are a few areas that it would be found that the two feet couldn't be done for whatever reason. But as it now stands, the, the concept plan is to do four feet in most spots and two feet in those areas that, that are particularly sensitive. And what's, what's the, the reasoning behind this? I mean, we've, we've heard mentions of bikeway here tonight and some people saying, is this a bikeway in disguise or w what is actually happening? I'd like to try to be up front you know, with the public in terms of what public safety concerns have brought this to the fore in terms of doing it because it really isn't primarily, as I understand it, or certainly how my vote is coming, meant to, to <coughs> institute a bikeway, although it might have that effect. But I hear, I'm hearing more about public safety concerns. Could you address that, that side of the equation? Yeah, my sense is it's to add, you know, I use the term, an, an added measure of safety. Uh, for for bikers, for pedestrians, as well as for for people motoring uh, on Route 77, excuse me, on Shore Road, when do any good on Route 77? <laughs> uh, essentially, it, you know, by uh, at the same time we'll accomplish a little drainage work. We'll also remove a little bit of ledge that that uh, inhibits biking. But at, at the same time, it's trying to you know, deal with other things that can come into the mix for Route 77. What what is the amount of take? I know you said major items like uh, rock walls or big trees, et cetera, will be left undisturbed, but aren't there other <coughs> bushes, flowers, and, and other things that will, in effect, be taken? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's contemplated to do it all in the right of way. There, there wouldn't be any taking of land. Uh, th there are some <laughs> plantings that, that people do have within the right of way, and uh, the plan would be uh, there's a few areas where you, you might have some trees you want to trim them up a little. But, but not actually take a tree down. But th there would be some trimming up so that as people are, you know, riding on a bike, you know, at a, at a certain height that, you know, they're, they're not bouncing into, into branches. But, you know, it's the type thing you'd want to, we really ought to be doing for safety anyway for the existing uh, public using the road. Uh, beyond that, uh, it, my, my sense is that, th that there is a little bit of scrub brush, what I would call scrub type, that you see in some of those sections. Uh, that we would want to uh, cut down. But for, for, but for the most part, particularly on that, it's interesting, on the curvy section, you think of it as, as very narrow, but there's actually quite a bit of flat, flat land uh, in that section, and no problem at all getting it through most of it. There's a, there's a few spots uh, where we would have to do a little bit of filling uh, in some spots where the road falls off, uh, particularly across from Delano Park, uh, around entrance uh, two and three, I believe. Uh, up up this way, uh, there are some tighter spots, and uh, you know, there's, there's, I know there's a tree on the corner of Julianne Lane that you know obviously no one wants to see go, and you know if we have to narrow it up a, a little bit more than the two feet there, there we will. Uh, beyond that, uh, by the Rands residence and the Haywood residence, uh, there are some lilacs, uh, and you know again, uh, you know it, it, there may have to be a little trimming there, but you know there's no intent to uh, take any of the lilac trees. Thank you. Anybody else? Council <coughs> Clark Show. Before you um, begin any of this process, are you going to have the um, right of way surveyed so we'll know exactly where in the right of way the road falls? I don't think we would have it surveyed. I think the state, uh, about 15, 20 years ago, uh, did, a, did a right of way survey uh, on uh, Shore Road, and we would uh, pull that out and look at it. And Ensure that uh, we did stay within the right of way. But that does show where the actual road is in re reference to the right of way. Yes. <clears throat> and then any subsequent um, resurfacing that's been done since the, the state's <coughs> research um, hasn't moved the road over very much? State doesn't resurface very often, so. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> we know that. <laughs> no, I, I don't think uh, the road has moved out. Do you know when the last time that was surveyed, Bob? Mid-60s? Mm -hmm. That's Mid -60s. correct. Mm -hmm. 
That is correct. I live in an abandoned house in the garage in the town at the same time. But I think the right of way might be a little different than where the actual road is. It's just had a couple of those turns it's bound to move. No question. And the constant spring. My, <coughs> my question for Mr. Malley is basically um, what's going to happen to Shore Road uh, if we don't do this project with respect to increasing the shoulders? Uh, is the road itself in, in uh, such a condition in, at the edges or anywhere else such that if we don't um, allocate this $150,000, is the road in jeopardy of uh, crumbling or that type of thing? That, that's my first question. I would almost agree with the manager that it's more of a safety issue. The road itself is in good condition. The base is in good condition. Uh, there are some sections that are going to need an overlay at some point, but it's really... Uh, a project that would enhance the safety and allow joggers and walkers and bicyclists to do their recreational habits in a little bit safer condition. Just give them a little more room. But as far as the road itself, it's in fine shape. There are some drainage improvements that we need to make in conjunction with the project, um, but that's not a problem with the road itself. And would we be striping each side, uh, basically um, letting the, uh, the driver of a motor vehicle knowing to know that they should not be over the white line, that type of thing? Currently, we have an edge line, a four-inch edge line on the edge of the road, and that would be the delineation between the shoulder and the traffic lane. So that would continue to be there. Okay. Is there any other structure anywhere on that road other than the uh, stone walls, significant trees, or you've mentioned uh, some lilacs, is there anything else that comes to mind that uh, any homeowners might have uh, strong feelings about being removed? Yeah, I think the only other, I, you know, I don't know, there may be something that, that someone else may see that I haven't seen, but there are a few problems with utility poles uh, that, that might need to be relocated <coughs> a foot or two. Uh, further on to the land of the homeowner, you mean? or Still within the right-of-way, but a little further in. I see. Council Emma. Uh, yeah, I, the uh, issue of significant trees. Uh, I'd like to have an opportunity before any, uh, any, any trees were cut down to see what the plan was and to review that. Uh, because I think there is concern in the community that uh, maybe we're rushing into some of these projects uh, without giving enough consideration uh, to uh, the existing uh, trees and other uh, other structures that make this uh, a rural community, as some people want it to to remain, I think we all do. But realizing that we are actually a suburban uh, community, <coughs> and that uh, we do have multiple uses of those roads, if we could try to balance uh, putting in the uh, additional. Uh, tar with trying to keep as much as possible of what's there uh, and not doing what we've done on Sawyer Road and some of the other projects because I, I do think there's a real concern. I person personally am concerned uh, about maintaining the character, but I'm also really concerned about the safety issues and uh, and believe that we have got to do something to, to improve the safety conditions on Shore Road. So. That's where I'm coming down. I would like to see the actual plan before anything's done. Thank you. Council Cogshaw. A positive vote for this item tonight is not a final vote on the expenditure of funds. Is that correct? Yes. It, it would be on uh, those projects that don't need additional funding. So on this overlay on Shore Road, it is not a Uh, but we would, I, I would see it if you voted to move ahead on the traffic study, the Sawyer Road and the planning for Waterhouse Road, I would consider that as if you had voted those funds. Like because those would be fully <coughs> funded under this vote, the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement Program would not be fully funded. 
would have to come back for an additional council vote. But, but I would see in, if you voted to allocate this sum to incur some expense between now and ne your next vote on uh, design. But not much, but a few thousand. Five, no more than five. Anybody else? Council Greenlaw. I have a question for Mr. Malley. On the Sawyer Road situation, how wide, it, so we're talking a four foot shoulder. How wide is the road pavement there? I believe it's approximately 25 to 30 feet. Near the Rod and Gun Club, it's about 30 feet wide, the actual traffic, traffic lane. And how wide is the road pavement in the recon, more recently reconstructed part of Sawyer? It's not 30 a feet? <laughs> no, 30. 22, 4, and 4. 30 altogether. It's 30 feet in total. We had a four foot shoulder on the newly reconstructed section. Four on each side. I think it's two 11 foot travel lanes. So, <coughs> if you have, so you've got 22 feet of vehicle, of car and truck paved <coughs> travel area. More in some areas. More in some areas. I'm wondering if it needs to be widened for con a consistent four feet all along if we already have some of that pavement in place. Well, I think you've got an adequate shoulder there right now to do the work. You've got, in some areas, a six-foot shoulder. A paved shoulder? A gravel shoulder. Okay. So you're not going to be adding on to the actual shoulder itself, but I believe you really need to have an at least 11-foot travel lane on each side, mm -hmm. at least. and. Uh, I don't think this will be, you know, it won't look like a major super highway. It will just be adding on again that four feet, which really isn't that much. Okay. In some places, is the paved width down by the Rod and Gun Club, it's more than 22 feet? Yes, it is, definitely. And I'm wondering if, the, if in those areas we can just increase it to a, make it a total of 30 feet rather than adding the four feet mm -hmm. on each side. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Is that what the proposal is to do? Well, when we originally um, quoted it out, we just added four feet on to the existing shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where my fence is in relation to the line, but my fence is not on my property. And I, you get very used to having your yard set up as it is with your stone wall in place where it is. That does not necessarily mean that's where the right-of-way line is. I hope the citizens will realize we are not proposing to demolish any existing stone walls with this plan, even if they are within the right-of-way. It's my very strong and fervent hope that we can find a way to accommodate two feet of shoulder pavement on each side without jeopardizing at all any of the existing stone walls. That would be such a fatal blow to the character of Shore Road that it wouldn't work for a lot of reasons. I understand the concern about the significant trees. I've been accused in another capacity of being a tree hugger not without just cause, and agree with the previous council comments that we have 
some input and some knowledge of what the plan is about the trees, and I would hope our town tree warden could be involved in that as well. I hear we have a good plan coming from him in the near future. But I do very strongly feel that for safety issues that the sh proposed shore road improvements are very worthwhile. They will give anybody traveling shore road in anything but a four-wheel vehicle a fighting chance out there. I don't know that we need more than two feet along most of it. I've heard a very concerned citizen today saying you're going to widen shore road by eight feet the entire length. No, that is not going to happen. <laughs> I know Frank drives it a lot too. Um, it is the rural character of Cape Elizabeth, but as Councilor Amaro said, we are more of a suburban town, especially in that end of town, than we are rural. And I think we have to address for the entire citizenry the fact that we have suburban traffic and pedestrian circulation on that road. And I think these improvements would help address that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I would like to speak in favor of the idea proposed by Councilor Amaro regarding that I would be ready to move acceptance of this packet as it is proposed, but I do feel that we need another stopgap for the Council to maybe approve this conditional upon our looking at the plan a little more closely and, and approving that plan. If we could see it here maybe in some format or <coughs> however it could be, just it needs a little more scrutiny on my part in order to be able to just make sure that in my own mind, it doesn't negatively impact the character of that road because it's a prime concern. I understand the safety issues. I think we're helping out some. We're not going the whole, the whole bikeway route, but this will help some, and that's good. But I think we still need, perhaps to avoid another Fickett Street situation, us to look at it one more time and see and, and avoid the trees as much as possible. With that. With that, I'm, I'm, if, was that, I believe that was what you were saying, Council. So I, I'm, I'm wholeheartedly supportive of that. Thank you. I just have one. Thing. Is there any fences that you would be concerned about? That's my point. I agree with everything that was said here. That I'm not going to end up with another Fickett Street. And if there's any tree, bush, lilac, what have you, that can be saved, I yeah. want to see it saved. And if they get down to a foot or two feet, um, I'll be in the I think that We have a letter here from uh, Joseph Bolisk, and it says here, Members of the Town Council, Town of Cape Elizabeth, Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Dear Members of the Council, it has come to my attention that the Town of Cape Elizabeth is considering widening Shore Road from the intersection of 77 to Fort Williams Park. We would like to endorse the concept of such widening to better provide protection and bike traffic on Shore Road. We do have concerns, however, of how the council will address the taking of major tree stone walls and that contribute the significant beauty of Shore Road. Provided these concerns can be met, we wholeheartedly endorse the council action to fund such a capital improvement project. Signed, Joseph Bolus and Cheryl R. Bolus. So I think what we've heard pretty much is Everybody's interested in the safety part of it, and uh, 
if we can do it without destroying the character of the road. But I do want to review it like the rest of them to see what's being done before we move ahead. And I believe Mr. Malley, and I don't know if anybody has any other questions. Yes, Council Crewman. Yeah, the only <coughs> the only point I wanted to make, and that is um, that this evening I think the the use of the term bikeway uh, has been thrown out several times. The the council had a very uh, impressive and sophisticated <coughs> presentation last year from uh, Mr. Hunter and his associates with respect to uh, a proposed bikeway uh, on Shore Road, and this uh, this project much greater in scope than what we're calling this evening uh, roadway uh, improvements, shore, road, shoulder improvements. Um, the bikeway in this proposed design is much more complicated in terms of price tag and excessive revenue to the town of Shore. And in my own view, uh, the circuit court has been very clear that that is not the case. Uh, it will provide for uh, improved pedestrian and bike traffic on Shore Road, but it isn't per se creating a bikeway. And I think uh, it's important to, to make that point since there are, I think, different uh, safety and liability issues uh, for all of us if indeed we were uh, making that proposal. So it's an improvement to what we have there right now, but it is not a bikeway per se, as is presently uh, constructed on Route 77. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. It just, uh, I've listened very carefully to all the comments the council has made and understand very clearly that uh, at least some of the councils, perhaps the majority would, I assume, I assume unanimously would like to actually see a plan. Uh, we, do, we also have an additional problem that's come up <coughs> on the Route 77 strip. Uh, the main Department of Transportation uh, official position, even as of this date, is that they, they expect us to pick up 20% uh, of the cost. I've had several discussions with Commissioner Connors regarding this, and, and my sense is that he will want us to come up with, with a lesser amount for that. Uh, I think, you know, in, in recognizing we may have to come up with some funds for, uh, for the strip and the council would have to approve a memorandum of understanding on that very necessary project, that what you might like to do this evening is to approve the, uh, the first three projects, the town center, the bikeway on Sawyer Road and the Waterhouse Road, and to, for Shore Road, only uh, approve continue, continued planning on the project at an amount not to exceed I mentioned 5000 a few few minutes ago, but thinking about it more, perhaps up to $7,500 uh, with, with the understanding that uh, that, that enables planning and, and requires uh, the plan to come back into you for approval. And, but it gets the process underway and it, it makes a, you know, sort of like a policy commitment to the, by the council that this is a project that you, you want us to continue studying and moving ahead on, but you're holding off on a final vote until you see a final design. Anyone got any comment as far as what the man just stated as far as Route 77 is concerned? The utilization of the savings realized by the 50,000 subtract whatever we okay you is going to be possibly earmarked for something else though? Is that what you were saying? What I was saying is there's a chance you're going to have to come up with some funds for the overlay of the Route 77 strip. I think a project that unanimously everyone seems to recognize in town needs to be done uh, you know this would be the this pool of funds would be the source for that money uh, and essentially what I'm suggesting is uh, that you you not since Shore Road shoulder improvements going to be coming back to you next year anyway for an additional uh, funding you look at if you have to take X number of dollars this year you look at next year's funding and, and try to make the Shore Road whole then and perhaps delay one of the other things that had been proposed for next year. The, the problem is the state's, uh, you know, really holding us on, on the Route 77 and you know, I, I do 
if, if you allocate all these funds, you're, you could have a significant gap in uh, trying to get the overlay of uh, Route 77. Done. And I'm not ready to you know, publicly state the amount uh, because I uh, want to keep the pressure on the commissioner to pay for all of it. Councilor Greenlaw. My concern would be that the amount um, required from the town for the Route 77 overlay would not make up the difference. I think this is what I'm hearing from Council Latore also, that there would still be some money there that, you know, would be more money than we need for the Route 77 overlay plus the engineering conceptual work for the shoulder improvements we've discussed for Shore Road. And I'm not at ease in having money just sitting there. And my proposal would be to have that money stay in an account for the Shore Road shoulder improvements if there were an excess. Council Emerald. Uh, I'd like to go beyond that and suggest that we allocate the funds as they were initially recommended. Uh, that these, this was basically the way during budget time that we agreed to appropriate funds for road improvements in Cape Elizabeth. We did not consider any money for 77. We uh, were under, we had assurances from the state that that was their responsibility because they let it go as long as they did. I don't want uh, the state department to feel that there is money available in our budget for that project. Uh, and I'd like to see us negotiate under uh, with that in mind. However, if it comes down to whether the road gets done or not, and we do need to make a contribution, the manager could come back to us uh, at that time uh, and then ask that, uh, whether we would be interested in reallocating some of these funds. But for, for right now, I'd like to appropriate them just as they were <coughs> originally uh, suggested without any consideration uh, for paying for what the state uh, should be doing on uh, Route 77. Anybody else? Council Greenlaw. That sends the message that I would like to send to the state. I agree with Council Greenlaw. Council Latore. I just wanted to say that what, what I'm coming down to from this whole evolution of the discussion is I'd like to see some more engineering studies regarding this proposed scheme. Because I'm, I'm a little bit leery of kind of just going in and reading through this. I can't see how it's going to work. And this is kind of the point that I want to make. feel that we've been negotiating with the state because this figure started out at $40,000 originally and the manager and I met with the commissioner and uh, we had quite a discussion about it, a very good discussion and I stated at that time, of course the gentleman is here today to defend it, but uh, asked Commissioner stated in this hall more than once when the question was asked who was going to be responsible for the maintenance of this road. And Dave Stevens says we'll be responsible. Now, nobody can find anything in writing.
think we have tried to negotiate this, and I think it's come down pretty much to that. Now, they may get hard-nosed and do something different, but uh, I think we've got to be careful on just how we go here and how far we're going to push people. And uh, I think that project needs to be done more often, uh, sooner than Shell Road needs to be. So, And I'm not going to sit here and increase the budget if I can pass your road on as far as doing anything as the city engineer and the city manager and they they seem to be interested in what's going to happen. Was there? No, I this may sound somewhat inconsistent, but I, I agree with you and I also agree with those those counselors who say keep sending the message. Uh, you know, if I can go back to the commissioner and say that the council had this discussion and refused to to budge. Uh, you know that might weigh in his decision. You know if we are forced, uh, you know, to come up with some funds, you know, perhaps we, you know, can look at towards next year's allocation. And you know, do, since we won't be actually be forced to come up with funds, uh, perhaps until after July one. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Council Latour. I'd like to move uh, acceptance of the uh, proposed allocation of roadway and drainage improvement funds as we have in our packet for fiscal 1990. Second. I would just like to say before we vote on that that I'll agree with you, sir, if you want to try it one more time that uh, I will not stand in your way. Go Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Augusta tomorrow for other matters. Everyone understand the motion? <clears throat> if so, raise your hand. Those opposed to it? I guess we all agreed we understood. I want to keep you guessing. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on general assistance ordinance, and I'll turn that over to the manager. Yes, about once every two years the, after the legislature meets in its uh, regular session, uh, Maine Municipal Association updates its model general assistance ordinance. Uh, essentially, the state legislature tells us how to run our general assistance ordinance and gives us almost no leeway in the operation of the program. I could go into a lot of details on uh, what's in these uh, if anyone desires. I don't think it's necessary. I looked mine over. Not too closely, but I looked her over. <laughs> Anybody got a comment? Anybody out in the public like to comment on the public hearing as far as general assistance ordinance in the town? I think it's pretty much stated that we've got to go by somebody else's rules whether we like it or not. Therefore, I'll close the public hearing and move on to item 112 to consider proposed general assistance ordinance and take any necessary action. What's your wishes? Mr. Chairman, I move acceptance of the general assistance ordinance as proposed in our packets. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote. Six to nine. Item 113, to consider scheduling a workshop and our a public hearing on the latest draft of the proposed wetland ordinance and take any necessary action. I believe Councilor Creelan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for those of you here and those of you at home who viewed the January 8th uh, first public hearing on the proposed wetland uh, wetlands ordinance, uh, you may remember amount of input uh, with respect to uh, suggestions on this ordinance. Uh, on that particular evening, 17 individuals came forward and offered their input. Since that particular evening, uh, the Ordinance Committee uh, has met uh, for an extensive uh, evening session to look at that input uh, as well as uh, several written uh, letters that came uh, to our attention 
the first being a uh, three-page letter from Matthew and Sally Karras of Seven Stone Bridge Road. Uh, the second document, a three-page letter forwarded to us by uh, the Sprague Corporation with respect to uh, their concerns uh, regarding the proposed ordinance. The third letter, a four-page uh, document uh, forwarded to us uh, from Larry Clough of 58 Stony Brook Road. Uh, a two-page document from uh, Dr. Peter Rand uh, addressing issues of this ordinance, as well as a uh, sheet that we have yet to fine-tune uh, that includes revisions to the current draft of the wetlands ordinance involving uh, forest management activities and uh, timber harvesting. Um, all of these uh, pieces of input essentially filter down into uh, six major areas uh, that need uh, further work. Uh, they include agricultural issues, forestry issues, uh, call them developers issues, uh, buffers, uh, definition of wetlands, and assorted other uh, topics, and then essentially the uh, the problems with the current map itself. Based on, uh, again, the uh, extraordinary amount of input, the Council will be meeting uh, on Wednesday, uh, January 31st, uh, between 4.15 and 6.15, for a two-hour televised uh, workshop that will include uh, the Town Council, uh, the manager, the chairman of the planning board, chairman of Dr. Peter Rand, and the town planner, uh, Steve Butler. Um, what we will uh, try to do is sort out much of the input that has uh, come in with the intention of setting the second public hearing uh, for March 12th. Uh, originally, we had hoped to set the, public, the second public hearing for our regular uh, February Town Council meeting, but because of the uh, extensive amount of input, the complicated and technical nature of the input, uh, we will need both that council workshop and most probably one to three further ordinance committee meetings to uh, fine-tune this document to have it ready for a uh, second public hearing. So that is the uh, basic uh, bottom line uh, with respect to uh, the latest draft and the work that the uh, Ordinance Committee has done with respect to the proposed wetlands ordinance. Okay, thank you. Anybody else got a comment? Do I? Your motion? Well, I'd be happy to move that uh, we uh, set a council workshop to consider the input we have received uh, regarding the proposed wetlands ordinance for January 31st, <coughs> 1990, between 4.15 and 6.15 p.m. to be televised to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth with the intention of taking uh, this input back to the Ordinance Committee uh, for the purpose of offering a second uh, public hearing on March 12, 1990, regarding the proposed Wetlands Ordinance. Thank you. Your second? Okay. Uh, I had one comment here. If I understood it if we didn't get the proper help to fire as televising it that we was going to tape it and play it at a later date. Is that correct? That was our intent yes. that uh, we'd have an opportunity to uh, send it over the air over channel 38 uh, for review of all 
I think the, the, the point being is that there hopefully would be those 12 uh, individuals at the workshop and to get the enormous amount of work done that we need to get done, uh, it probably wouldn't be as useful to have a give and take back and forth. Uh, thus, the workshop would be for the specific people that I had uh, mentioned, although uh, as any uh, workshop uh, that we have, certainly the public is invited. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Greenlaw. I think the understanding is that it will be televised and or taped that night, and even if it is televised live that night, it will be replayed later for the citizens. It, I view this as a very helpful educational workshop for myself as a counselor and would imagine any citizen in town could view it in the same way. That would be my understanding. Okay, thank you. Everyone understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Anybody opposed to it? The vote, six to nothing. Item 114, to consider the recommendation of the Board of Sewer Appeals relating to the proposed increase in sewer rates and taking necessary action. I believe we have a gentleman here from the Board of Sewer Appeals. I believe it's the Secretary, Kyle Pearson. You have a few comments that you'd like to kick out? Oh, hi. How are you, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carl Pearson. Uh, Bill Orcott, our chairman, did want to make it, but he was called out of town, so he couldn't. But he just wanted to express that the decision that we came to on the proposed uh, increase in the sewer rate that Mike had uh, proposed at the last meeting, uh, we took under our powers and uh, contemplated it for some time before we came up with our recommendation, which is before you. Uh, which basically the biggest change that we made was uh, the recommendation was made for a 7.2 percent increase in the sewer fund to alleviate some shortfalls that would be uh, uh, caused by an increase in uh, sludge removal uh, and a few other miscellaneous factors. Uh, I think I have them here. Uh, connection fees uh, due to uh, slowdown in construction. So basically a loss of revenues and we do have an increase in expenditures due to the sludge removal, et cetera. Uh, our biggest concern was with the decrease in the general fund contribution to the sewer fund, uh, which we felt was uh, better used, left in the sewer fund uh, to take care of any problems with infiltration. Uh, this may sound confusing to some at home, but uh, the funds uh, the general fund uh, is used uh, by the sewer fund to take care of anything that might be acquired or caused by uh, drainage and whatnot, uh, causing runoff into the sewer system. So those of you who aren't on the sewer, uh, even though you'll be paying part of this, uh, you're still getting the benefit. I don't know if I'm confusing anyone. Without further ado, I'll stop, <laughs> unless there's any questions. How's that? Thank you. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Has anybody got a question or comment to Mr. Pearson or the manager? Yes, Council Greenlaw. I have some questions for Carl. I really appreciated the thoroughness with which the minutes from that um, Board of Sewer Appeals meeting went through the deliberations mm -hmm. and the considerations you folks had. And I did appreciate um, the explanations that you gave, especially for um, reestablishing the amount of the general fund contribution from past years and the fact that this would be a tax deductible amount mm -hmm. for people because it would, would be part of their general taxes. I'm wondering what kind of cons consideration, if any, that the, the board gave to changing the minimum amount of usage. Right now it's at 1,200 cubic feet is the minimum amount everybody is charged who's mm -hmm. on the sewer is my understanding. That's correct. Was there any consideration given to decreasing that amount at all? And Not therefore really. being able to decrease the minimum rate, perhaps? Okay, yeah, that was, that was part of our discussion was uh, without increasing the basic rate, okay, of the 8520 mm -hmm. uh, to increase the, I, I'm hoping that this is what I'm <laughs> hearing, yeah. with this. Uh, increase the 
usage above 1,200 cubic feet so that those people that use more water, et cetera, uh, will be charged more to offset some of these costs. Is that what you're looking at, or are you looking at That's what I'm the driving Portland at, water but district? I'm looking at saying that there would be, I'm not sure what the rate might be, but have the cutoff not be 1,200 cubic feet, have okay. it be 1,000 cubic feet, perhaps, or 800, whatever. Okay. Uh, and that, we didn't consider that. We were, all right, in our discussion, we found that of that basic uh, rate with the 1,200 uh, cubic feet, not many people were exceeding that. Uh, approximately 88%, I guess, of the town was staying below that cap. I don't know where on that cap they were falling. Okay, so I don't know if it was well below so that, you know, there's no telling where you could drop that cap to. I mean, do you find out that most people are using 700 cubic feet, dropping the basic rate to cover the 700 cubic feet, and then charging more for the additional usage? I don't know what those figures are. I did so. pose this question to the manager today because I was not sure who set the 1,200 cubic feet as the mm -hmm. cutoff rate, and I was told the council is the body that sets that. And I believe what I heard was that at one point it was 1,500 cubic feet, and then it was lowered to 1,200 cubic feet. And I think before I'm comfortable pursuing this, I would like to see the figures that we've been of actual <laughs> you've done, actual usage you look at and see how majority. what percentage of the town if it would be worth our while to consider dropping the minimum rate to an amount less than 1200 cubic feet mm -hmm. and see if that would then we could perhaps really more equitably charge people and those who are actually using more than the average minimum would be charged more mm -hmm. Okay, just a minute. The I, manager has. When you called me this, this afternoon, I looked into it a little bit, and there's about 7% of the sewer customers use 500 cubic feet or less. About 2%, an additional 2% use 600 cubic feet, 2.1%, 700, 2.5%, 800, 2.7%, 900, 3.3% uh, 1,000, 3.7% at 1,100, and 3.8% at 1,200. Uh, if you wanted to uh, reduce from 1,200 to say 1,100. You could reduce, but yet keep the the proposed from the committee, the 227 variable rate. Uh, you could reduce uh, the the minimum by two dollars, and it's essential. You could reduce the minimum by two dollars for every uh, 100 cubic feet under uh, 1,200. There's a little bit of play in the numbers, but I figured it several different ways, and it's essentially. Uh, two dollars in the minimum for every hundred. Um, for every hundred. Anybody else, Council Greenlaw? With all the concerns that are expressed about this town sewer rates, I would like to see. I can't digest all that right now. <laughs> I, I'm glad. I really thank you for doing that. I can basically digest it. But I think I would like us to consider sending this back to the Board of Sewer Appeals and let you folks digest <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. and review this aspect of it and perhaps mm -hmm. see if we can not increase the rates to the extent that we've been talking to date and do that by lowering the minimum of the first amount of cubic feet that's measured. Well, we're always willing to meet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just Anybody want to know how the rest of the council feels about that. Council Amaral. I don't see how that would uh, allow us to reduce rates. And we still have to uh, raise that certain It would just level. be less of an increase. Less of an it increase. wouldn't necessarily reduce the rates, but the increase wouldn't be as great. But for some be, people. For some. For somebody else is going, would have to pick up. The base rate, I think, no matter what, the base rate is going to increase by about what amount is what uh, Janet's concern is, okay, to try to keep that less than the 96 uh, cent uh, proposed, okay, I think she's trying to drop that down and then possibly keeping the rates, you know, the, the same percentage increase, so in other words, we've increased to 5.7 for both rates, we may still, I think she wants perhaps the same percentage increase, but at a lower cap. 
right? Not the 5.7%, maybe it was a 4.7% increase. Mm -hmm. But with the lower cap, you'd still make up the same shortfall. How's that for confusion? <laughs> but it's Very still, confused. It still seems, <laughs> though, that what, what Jane is driving at is...
do that in conjunction with the council, I imagine, and whatever ordinance committee might be established. Have you uh, gone as far as to come up to a recommendation to Not the council? Not at this time. Not at this time. We're, we, we anticipate a meeting coming up in the not too uh, distant future. And we're going to bring that up to more discussion because we have a new board member who has uh, had the dubious honor of being around when the sewers were a real issue in town. And that's Mr. John Perry. So we've got a, an authority on the sewer system uh, sitting with us now. So Good man, I know I him. think you'll, you'll have plenty of action from us in the next few months. Few months. I was thinking a few weeks. <laughs> Please, <laughs> we haven't met in several months. Wow, we want to. We want to get you moving. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. You understand where I'm coming from? Yes, I do. You take it back to your committee. I will do so. I believe that there's other concerns here. They want to nod their head, or raise a hand, or say yes. <clears throat> there's no concerns on your mind. No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Item 114, to consider a recommendation from the Board of Sewer Appeals relating to a proposed increase in sewer rates and take any necessary action. What's your wishes? Mr. Chairman, I'd like, Greenlaw. I'd like to move that we direct the manager to work up a number of scenarios with a lower base than the 1,200 cubic feet that now exists and bring those to us at our February 12th meeting. I'd like those to go down to considering the base at least as low as 1,000 cubic feet. That's Not necessarily right. with each of them, you don't have to write a list. <laughs> Not necessarily with each of them covering the deficit in the base. That's your recommendation? Mm -hmm. Second. 1,000 square feet. I mean, 1,000 cubic feet. I'd like to see the 1,100 and the 1,000 anyway. Yes. If it looks worth doing more, he can use his judgment. Can you meet that schedule, sir? Yeah, it's just it, it, the WADA district does its monthly customers on a divisibility of three. So if you're going to drop from 1,200, the, the logical mm -hmm. next amount to go to is 900 because of the, the district billing system. <coughs> well, it's a system-wide. I, I know what you're looking for. Go down as low as 900, please. Thank you, ma'am. show the intervening <laughs> intervals. <laughs> The body district can learn how to divide. One scenario. It's now, a good thing we're not giving a pop quiz on this. That's all I could say. <laughs> now that if we uh, come back on the 12th, then we've got to have a public hearing in March. I'll second Councilor Greenlaw's motion. So we'll be able to meet your schedule as for your billing date, you think? No problem. Okay. I'd like to hear that. It's been moved and seconded. Everybody understand the motion? If so. All in favor, raise your hand. It's a vote, six to nothing. Wow. <laughs> Item 115, to consider permitting the use of Fort Williams Park for three Portland Symphony Orchestra concerts and take any necessary action. Now, are we just handling this one at a time? Or do we have the chairman of the Fort Williams Committee would like to make a comment, and then we take them out one by one. What is your wishes, sir? You have no problems with the PSO dates? Okay. Do I hear a motion that we accept those dates? So moved. Second. Does anybody want to read them off? Uh, I move that we uh, approve the dates of July 3rd, July 13th, and July 27th for our performances of the Fort Symphony Orchestra at Fort Wayne. It's been moved and seconded. Yeah, with the customary parking uh, fares. Everybody understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote, six to nothing. 